right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Denver, Colorado by Sally Doobie. How are you doing, Sally? I'm terrific, John, especially given what's going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the world Sally, today. Yeah, exactly. Sally's chief sales officer and partner at the Bridge Group, uh, which is a an organization that uh, strategically consults and helps um, sales teams and sales organizations. And what we wanted to talk about today is, as Sally just alluded to, we live in strange times. And, and when this video goes live uh, in the next five to 10 days, I don't think things will have <laughs> changed. Well, what I'm saying is I don't think things will have returned to normal. Mm -hmm. they, things will be still evolving. And one thing we wanted to talk about was this is probably very, very strange for some people, particularly in sales, who may be remote selling for the first time, as in, you know, as in not working out of an office or an inside sales team that's not working out of an office. And a sales manager may be managing a remote sales team for the first time. And so this is a whole new experience for some people, and it's going to take some getting used to, and they're going to have to adapt quickly if they don't want their their whole year to to go south, uh, so so Sally, what are let's let's start off by what are some of the challenges you think that let's say the sales manager particularly faces with trying to get his team organized to effectively sell remotely if he's used to having he or she is used to having them in an office or a building together or a big inside sales team or something where he can control them very easily. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And it, and it is so timely because these groups are typically not, you know, remote teams, they're virtual, they get their motivation and, and you may have. So I think there's the first thing is, do we have the right setup for the people to work remotely, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, do they have have headphones? Do they have a place where they can have a quiet place? You know, it's appropriate backdrop. Um, I heard of some examples recently where people actually were doing video and, you know, there was a bed in the back. <laughs> you know, in the background. An, an and, unmade bed, probably. Yeah, you know, and so it's, um, these are difficult times and people will probably understand a lot more and be a lot more forgiving about stuff like that than normal, but it's just not a good thing. So, you know, we need to make sure as managers that our people have whatever they need. Do they have the right internet set up? I mean, I know with a lot of internet connections, you can choose how fast or how slow, mm -hmm. you know, at your home. Do you have the right, you know, can they do the job? Do, you, do they have a mouse and a keyboard and a, you know, an extra monitor? Because um, I know a lot of these uh, inside and sales development teams and virtual sales teams, you know, they have multiple monitors on their desk. Yeah. What do they have at home? So there's, there's a lot about just even the setup when you move into a home situation that you may need to go through and help them with. Right. And I think yeah. also as a, as a manager, sorry, John, but just one last point, you know, I, I, again, I've talked to many people, some, you know, parents where both parents are working from home and their kids are home from school now, you know, how can we help them and be supportive of them in the environment that they're working through? Right. Yeah. And, and I think those, I think those are excellent points. <clears throat> and I think that's where you, uh, where managers have to show some leadership because these, you would think these, some of these things don't come intuitively to people, even though you think that they would. I mean, some days, or I, I know people will wake up one day and say, I'm working from home today. Oh, where am I going to put my laptop? Mm -hmm. um, so I do think, I do think the managers have to be encouraging and say to them, okay, and say to their teams, uh, just as you said, you have to treat this like, a regular work day. It's yes, you're in a different place now. So I mean, one, one thing that I always encourage people is don't yeah, don't roll out of bed and think, okay, I'm at home now. I don't have to get ready or whatever, yeah. because you're going to be in the wrong frame of mind, no exactly. matter how how you think. If you're sitting there in your sweats, you're you're in a leisure mode. Okay, you're not yeah. going to work. And again, I, and I think encourage them to have a conversation with their whole family and say, okay, this isn't some kind of bonus vacation. This is working, and therefore you know, we have to respect boundaries. We have to quiet all the. I know this is, can be difficult with young children, whatever. 
But I think it's imperative that managers tell their people to have these conversations and to consciously get ahead of things. Exactly. Set up, you know, alternate. If, if you're home with a partner mm-hmm. or a roommate or whatever, and you've got kids, alternate quiet times, right? This is my mm-hmm. block of an hour segments. This is your block of an hour segments. And then we're there to deal with other, <laughs> other situations yeah. that happen. But I do love what you said about when you get up, you, you know, I mean, there is some beauties of being able to be casual at home, but I do think it does give you a different mindset. I've been working from mm-hmm. home for many, many years and I get up, even though it may not look like it, but I get up, I make sure I'm showered, you know, mm-hmm. I'm full makeup for us women. Um, you know, you don't have to do that if that's not your norm, but you know, and <laughs> only at the weekend. Yeah. You know, and I am still today, I go out. And because working from home is different and I am a social person, that's why, you know, part of why I love being in sales and doing what I do. So I go out every morning before my workday starts and now I'm going to do a drive through latte (laughs) Um, and, you know, and still see people. But, you know, you got to get some of that. So build that in managers have those conversations because it Mm -hmm. is going to be different for a lot of people. Um, And, you know, one of the things that, that we do recommend is, you know, how are you going to compensate people from working from home and a stipend to pay for some of that? So, you know, work with your managers, work with your CFOs. How are we going to do this? Um, You know, also, I think we really need to look at, you know, how hard line are we going to take on quotas for people? It, especially mm-hmm. as people are all adapting to working from home and right. getting people. I think we've got a week or two hump where people are going to be stressed just making this transition from mm-hmm. home to office. So, you know, short term, you may not make any changes and you may see how it works out, but talk to your managers and say, you know, are we going to have some flexibility? Right. you know, to do this um, and to, to change things and be really abnormal for a while, right? And maybe yeah. they just go on a straight salary with a with a straight bonus paid for short term until we get through this, support people. But of course, you have to have your, you know, manager's approval for a yeah. lot of this, but get creative and tell people, you know, we're monitoring this. We're, we may make changes on a daily basis. Um, to make sure we're supporting our employees and doing the right thing by our employees. So that takes yeah. bigger conversations, but somebody needs to start them. Yeah. And, and I think those are great points. And, and as you said, I think, uh, I think we need to get creative around this. I think also that everybody, and I think this is a good um, one for managers too, is that uh, everybody knows people who either have been remote working for a long time. Maybe they you already have people in your company who've been remote working for a long time you should reach out to them and say, how do you do it effectively? Right? You don't always have to make these things rules up as you go along. Talk to people <laughs> who've done it effectively and get some insight and, and advice from them. And, and I think the other thing is, yeah, we don't know how long this is going on. So going to go on for, so you, you have to adapt quickly. I like the idea of getting creative in the short term. The other thing I would say to uh, salespeople and sales managers is that, uh, as you said, find a good place, find a quiet time, or whatever in your home. But then, even if it's only at the beginning of your sales call or whatever, get on your camera for a moment, because that is the greatest. Because a lot of people make the mistake of not doing that when they're doing virtual calls, mm-hmm. and it kind of de- it kind of puts up a little barrier. When you turn your turn on your camera, even if it's just at the beginning, say hi. This is just me. I just wanted to say hello and uh, you know put a face to the name, and I'm going to switch mm-hmm. it off if you bandwidth issues or whatever. And it doesn't matter whether the other person doesn't do it or not. You have broken down a lot of barriers by doing it. I totally, 100% agree. I always have my video camera on, no matter if it's an internal call Mm -hmm. um, with my teammates or if it is with a prospect or a client that I know my video camera is always on. And like you said, I don't care if they don't turn on theirs, that's their option. Mm -hmm. But it really helps, especially for sales reps, new prospects, SDRs, prospecting, when you can make 
that personal connection. They can see you and say, you know, this is a real live person I am dealing <laughs> with. It's not a bot. Um, you really break down a lot of barriers and you can, you know, make it much more personal and take it to those levels. So, you know, I think that is really important. I think it's really important for managing your teams as mm -hmm. well to let them feel that they're still part of the team. They're not out there on the island on their own when they can see all of their teammates. I mean, one thing I did a, a, a LinkedIn post on this um, on Friday because I really believe that SDRs and sales teams are more important than ever. We can't give mm -hmm. up. We have to keep doing our job, but we have to do it differently. Yeah. And we have to acknowledge that we're going through some really wacko times right now. And this is really unprecedented. I mean, I've lived through, I'm going to date myself a little bit here. I've lived through the earthquake in San Francisco in 1989. I've never seen anything like this. You know, I've lived through the fire in the Oakland Hills where 3,000 homes were burnt down um, in, in the Oakland Hills area. I've never seen anything like this. Live, you know, through the dot com bust in 2000 and, you know, and then, uh, and then 2001, um, yeah. you know, and then 2007, 2008, there's nothing like this that we've been through. Um, and so, you know, we have to acknowledge that. And I think it's really critical if we try to use our same old playbooks and our same old messaging, we are totally missing the mark right now. Mm -hmm. And we are going to look like we're bots and that we're <laughs> not human. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, not to get down on any of my AI friends <laughs> or bots, but I mean, this is a time we have to be human, both with our teams as well as with our prospects and our customers. So change your messaging to, you know, include what's going on today, but we also had to have to add value. So how can we help them get through what's going on today for our prospects and our customers? Um, you know, internally, you as a manager have to change it all about how you're managing. Yeah. Every day, I really highly stress you have a daily stand-up call for your entire mm -hmm. team. They don't have to be an hour by no means, not even a half an hour, 15 minutes, maybe the first couple to get the team going and check in with the team and get them involved, maybe a half an hour but then get them to 10 or 15 minutes and you've got to share because now you're not listening. You're not in the, having those water mm -hmm. cooler conversations. You've got to yep. share what's working, what's not working. You've got to brainstorm mm -hmm. together how to fix what's not working. Mm -hmm. um, I would have, you know, virtual office hours where you tell people, okay, every day between two and four, I'm not doing anything but taking calls, slacks, right. texts from you. Um, one of the things I also really like to keep that team motivation going is establish a weekly lunch and learn, even if it's remotely, but everybody's going to dial mm -hmm. in on their video cameras, do a Postmates or a Sendoso or order from your local restaurants that are doing takeout and Grubhub and everybody in the company is going to pay for everybody to have lunch, but mm -hmm. you're all doing it remotely. And again, talk about what's going on, talk about what's working, bring in somebody from marketing to give them an update as to what they're doing during these times, product marketing updates, your VP of sales, um, you know, can come in mm. and talk about what's going on um, and, and or and you I, do and it I with think, your team. Yeah. And I think one of the things that uh, that's going to surprise people because, it, OK, so maybe people are, are a little bit stressed and they're going to have you have to adapt to this. and all these But I think uh, what's going to surprise people and this is there are organizations out there um, where one of them who have operated very virtually for a long time now. And I think that people will discover that you actually and you can end up with better connections in some ways you can end up more focused in many ways and just like you were saying like say the office hours from the manager people tend to be more respectful of that when it's virtual than if you were just wandering by and you spot your manager and you see him sitting there next minute you know you've just had an hour-long conversation about 
basketball or whatever. I totally. It, online, yeah. uh, people tend to be a little bit more net in the way they communicate, but in a, and not in a bad way, but in a good way in the product. So I think people are going to be surprised about the upside of this. Yes, I, I totally do. If we do it right as well, you yeah. know, I, again, I think that there's, you know, we just have to think about things differently um, to keep people engaged, to keep them not panicking yeah. and to do their job. Um, and, I, and I think you also touched on another point here that I just wanted to uh, run a line under as well is the fact that uh, approaching things a little bit differently when you're reaching out and talking to prospects and, and, and customers, and that is to humanize the conversation a little more because people are in uncertain times. This is the best time now is to maybe show a little more of your human side. And as you said, um, yeah, I think in, in a good way, that's going to maybe have people rethink the whole bot AI strategy and maybe think it through mm -hmm. a little more. But because I really do think that now and coming out of this, the, the human element is going to become extremely critical again. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do have to, we have to have compassion for what our fellow team members are going through and trying to deal with a work from home situation, um, as well as our prospects, what they're dealing with and what they're being forced to. But on the other side, I think it's now more important than ever to have those dashboards, those tracking yep. the reporting mm -hmm. in place. Oh, yeah. So you can actually see what people are doing and see what is working and what's not working and help guide the team around that. Do a lot mm -hmm. of testing of your messaging. And the only way you can test your messaging, again, is if you're tracking and measuring. Um, and, you know, I will give a big shout out to some of our friends, um, such as Outloft or Outreach and Salesloft. Perfect time to be doing this and seeing what messaging, what emails are, are people responding to what voicemails, when are we getting callbacks as you're changing your messaging um, so that everybody can start using what's working, right? <laughs> and yeah, stop yeah. using those ones that aren't working. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's critical to use, you know, technology again, have your dashboard so your, your reps know what, you know, they can see what their activity level is and their success is compared to their teammates. And this is where you get a lot of that competitive spirit going. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm at home yeah. working and I see John is working and he's made twice as many emails and calls as I've made and he's booked twice as many meetings and got demos set up and I don't, I know I need to kick myself in the rear <laughs> yeah, yeah. and no, make I, it I, happen, right? <laughs> absolutely. And I think this is a fantastic opportunity for for organizations who maybe drag their feet a little bit on 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 digital on, on you know, their digital strategy on making sure that they're they have their CRM or whatever sales tools they're using that they're configured they're rolled out properly the proper metrics are in place so I think as as another bit of a silver lining I think this will be a, a a kick in the pan some companies need in order to actually come into the 21st century a little more and, and get their digital processes. And I absolutely agree, uh, agree with you that uh, if you use all of these tools correctly, uh, the fact that you're remote shouldn't make it that much of a difference. Right. You should still be able to create the same, you know, competitive atmosphere. You should still have the same insight. And in fact, it should make it easy. Yes. And that's where I think, again, as a manager, you know, when you have your daily standups, bring up and mention who's yeah. done really well, who's been really productive, who's been successful. Use that to motivate. You really need to be a motivator. And if you're not sure how to do that, you need to reach out. Um, John, as you said, you reach out to people that are used to doing this. Yeah. Um, if your manager's not, talk to your manager about, hey, how do I do better at motivating a remote team? Um, I think doing spiffs and contests are even more important now, even mm -hmm. if it's once a week, make them short term. You know, I love the fact that I just, I feel really bad for a lot of the retail and these restaurants sure. and bars. And I know in some places, a lot of them are closed down. Um, in other places, they're still open, but they're doing, you know, you have to do pickup or delivery, support those people out there, support your yeah. community. And so if you give, 
you know, if you do a spiff in a contest and you're using a gift card where they can go, your team members can go and support the local yeah. uh, local community. I think that's awesome. And yeah, I think that's everybody think that's all around. Idea. Yeah. And I think anyway, I think that's a good, uh, I know somebody mentioned that yesterday and I think it's a great idea. If there are places that you uh, typically frequent, you typically spend money in, if you yeah. have the disposable income right now do go ahead and buy gift cards show those people that you're going to support them so you know, they get a bit of cash yep. flow in the meantime and it's, if you're going to spend money there eventually anyway then it all yep. works out so Absolutely. yeah i think those but i love that idea of running of running competitions and using those kind of incentives where it doesn't not just an incentive for the salesperson but it's it's helping the community as well yep we got to do our part to keep the economy going. <laughs> yeah. So you know? uh, as as we as we bump up against the end of our time here, I think the uh, the message that we really want to underline again and again is, okay, you may be remote for the first time. This may be a whole new experience for you, but rest assured, there's a lot of us been doing it for a while, and it works great. It just takes a little bit of of focus and planning and thoughtfulness, and, and it'll all be. And you might actually find that it works better. Who knows? Yes. Yes. It's just, I think the key message is you can't do the same old thing, right? Yeah. Working remotely um, and expect the same outcome. I think that's the definition of insanity. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not Absolutely. And, and let's face and it, there's so, enough insanity in the world without adding Oh my to gosh, it. <laughs> it is. It is. So, so do things differently to get your people engaged um, and to keep this working properly. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Sally Doobie, thank you very much for joining us today. This was great, timely, and, and great insights. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. All of Sally's information, information about the, uh, the Bridge Group, will be in her contributor bio. But before we go, Sally, if you want to just spend a couple of seconds, tell people about yourself and your company. Uh, thanks. So, yeah, thank you for having me. This has been great. So, we are here to help you, all sales teams, SDR teams. Um, get through this. And we have a lot of different ways from helping assess your team to figuring out what training and coaching they need to rise to the top, um, to helping you set up your, you know, work from home strategy. Reach out to us. We are here. We've been in business over 20 years helping sales and SDR teams. Um, and so we want to help make sure you guys are doing what you need to do reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Um, go to our website. There's a lot of great resources as well and valuable information at the Bridge Group. Um, you probably know us from Trish Bertuzzi's book, The Sales Development mm -hmm. Playbook. <laughs> yeah. uh, so check us out. But we are here to support and help encourage and uh, keep you guys working and, and keeping your companies thriving and alive during this. Excellent. So thanks. All right, thank you. See you all for another Expert Insight interview really soon. Thank you.